I'll walk you through step by step the method I use. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I'll walk you through the method I use for breaking and batting using vinegar. So I have a set of Rebel Goons here, brand new, nice and crispy. We're gonna go ahead and break these in. All right, so the first thing you need to make sure of, and the most important thing to make sure of is when you get the vinegar, make sure you get white distilled vinegar. That is key. You need to use the white distilled vinegar. I don't care what brand, it needs to be white distilled vinegar. This this whole gallon jug's like just over three dollars at a local Meyer. So it's it's very cheap, very affordable. That's why a lot of people like this method because it is less expensive than other methods. Now, the other thing that I, I do is I do mine in the sink in my bathroom. You just need a a sink, a bowl, a tub, something big enough that you can put four bags in and cover it with enough water to keep the bags fully submerged. I, I will always want my bags fully submerged. I don't want them floating up. I don't want them kind of exposed. I want them underwater the whole process. So I use my sink for one, it works perfect for one set of bags. Uh, as far as the mixture, so this is a little bit of trial and error. Take a little bit of playing back and forth, trying to figure it out. The one thing I'll say when you're doing this, always err on the side of less. Because you can always go back and repeat this process if the bags aren't broken enough. You can't unbreak in the bags if you go too far. So you always want to err on the side of less until you find the right ratio works for you. In different bags, I, I use different amounts. So these goons, the two materials are not really that tough to break in. They're going to break in, they're going to pretty easily. So I'm only going to use a cup of vinegar with a sink full of water is the ratio I'm using. And that, again, any product you use, regardless of what it is, you're only breaking in the materials. And I, I, I can't stress it enough that, that you still have to break in the fill. That fill still needs to be broken in. And that happens from throwing the bags. When you throw them in the dryer and tumble them, that's going to help some, but you still going to get throw the bags. So I know after this process, I'm still going to spend several hours throwing the bags to break them in. So when I get done with this, I don't want my bags to feel fully broken in. I want them to be just shy of being broken. So that after I throw them for a few hours to break the fill in, the bags were very, because the materials are breaking more as I'm throwing them. So I, I don't want to go too far, right? So I'm going to stop this short so that when I go out there, I can finish the break in process off with the materials as I'm breaking in the fill. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead. I'm going to fill the sink up with water now. I'm going to add in my cup of vinegar and then we'll throw the bags in and we'll get to soaking. One thing I also want to mention is I like to use the hot water out of the tap. I don't want to add boiling water, anything more than that. I, I want the water to be hot, but not too hot that I can't put my hands in. If I can't put my hands in the water, I don't want to put the bags in. That's kind of my rule of thumb. All right, I want to take a moment to kind of clarify the ratios that I use. When I'm doing a non-carpet bag like this goon here, I usually typically do one cup of vinegar, two hours soak, then the hour in the dryer, throw a few hours, then they come out feeling perfect just where I want them. If I have a little bit stiffer material, like recently I had these War Walkers here that I reviewed, has this Viking carpet on there. I did a cup and a half of vinegar, soaked them for about two and a half hours. So I just extra half a cup, a little extra half an hour of the soak, and then dryer, throw a few hours, it came out feeling great. So if I go with a thicker, stiffer material, I will add a little more vinegar and add a little more time. I typically, I don't think I've ever gone more than three hours of a soak, and I've never done more than two cups of vinegar. If this is your first time doing it, I'd recommend one cup of vinegar, one hour soak, dry them, throw them for a bit, see how they feel. If they're not quite as broken as you want, you can go back to another cup, another one hour soak, and go from there. I think I mentioned it once. I'll just reiterate. You can always break them in more. You can't pull them back. So just, just err on the side of caution, doing less to start out with till you figure out where you want them to be. Uh, the other thing is the vinegar smell. Like a lot of people are just really scared of the vinegar because they're afraid the bags smell like vinegar. When I'm done, I just rinse them out thoroughly with clean water. I don't do anything. I don't have to use soap. I don't do anything else. I'll just rinse them out really good with clean water. And then when they're done drying, they come out, they smell fine. If it really concerns you, you can you can wash it with, with some dish soap. Just make sure you use unscented soap. But if that's a concern, you could do that. You can even soak them after you have the vinegar solution. Rinse them out really good. Soak them in clean water for 15, 20, 30 minutes just to, just to, if it makes you feel better. But I'll be honest with you, I have I rinse them, you know, after I'm done, no soaking, no dish soap. I rinse them. I have no issues with the vinegar smell at all. You're not going to, you're not going to have a problem with that. Uh, so just to sum this all up, the, the pros and cons of white distilled vinegar. Right? The, the biggest con is the time. It's a it's a it's a three four hour process depending on you know the the bags I'm breaking and how long I'm soaking them for stuff like that. And, that, and that's just to get them to the point where I can start going to throw them. Now, uh, granted, one hour of that is in the dryer. So you know, a lot of times when I'm doing this, I'll throw them in the dryer for a bit of bed, and then they'll dry overnight, and then in the morning, then they're fine to go. So that, you know, that's not as big of a deal. But you're doing a, a two hour three hour soak. You, you don't have to be hands on the whole time. But you got to be there to get them out when it's done. You don't want to leave them in for six or seven hours. I've heard people to soak these things overnight in the vinegar. I, I don't see any need to do that. I don't. I don't know if you can go too far with the vinegar as far as breaking them in. I haven't heard of that. Um, but I, you know, I, I, again, two to three hours is the most I, I will soak bags for. 
So time is the biggest issue. It just takes a lot. So if you're trying to break in banks quickly, maybe this isn't the best option for you. But the big pro for this, and, and it, it's a huge, is the cost. You know, three little $3 for this gallon jug. And I can do, depending on what bags I do and how much vinegar I'm doing per, per set, you, I can do 10, 12 sets of bags easily out of this gallon, probably more than that. You know, maybe even close to 14 sets out of this gallon jug, which is phenomenal for just over $3. So cost-wise, it's very cost-effective, very cheap. It's, it's readily available. You can go to your local grocery store and pick up white still vinegar. You don't have to order something for it to be shipped to you. So pros and cons, um, I, I think the pros are really outweigh the cons. And I like this process. It's something I'm using more and more and I'm having a lot of success with it. So go ahead. If you haven't tried it, I recommend you give it a try. If you do use it and you have a different process, drop a comment down below. Let me know what your process is. Let others know as well. Uh, if you've had an experience with it, good or bad, I'd love to hear your feedback. So uh, let me know what, what your thoughts are in the comments, guys. I, I thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support.